I found this on the web for who is the top ranked recruit in the country. Check it out. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Uncloud Recruit, where we get reviews from former student athletes about their experience at their universities. Let go. Another episode of Uncloud Recruit, and today I am the guest instead of the host. And uh, Trayvon will be interviewing me, and, t- and I'll be telling my story. So, without further ado, yes, Trayvon. So, yeah. hey, good morning, everybody. On the on the show today with my well, my cousin going to learn a little about his journey to Arkansas. I'm actually a little bit curious because when I met him, he was already committed. So today, man, today going to be interesting. I can't wait to hear, bro. So uh, let's get into it. So uh, basically, just tell everybody where you're from, where you started, what age you started playing football, things like that. So I'm originally from uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, right on the border of Oklahoma. Uh, my daddy from Oklahoma, my mama from uh, Van Buren, Arkansas, or Elma, I guess you could say. So she a country girl. Uh, and, um, you know, originally from Fort Smith, grew up and raised there, played ball, went to Jeffrey's Boys Club, started playing ball around probably like second grade. Started playing ball around second grade. And uh, that's where it all started, you know, for me with football and at the time I really didn't understand football that well because I was so young but I really didn't care about it it was just something that my parents just threw me in just to do I never really took it seriously yeah that's where it all started though and you was probably walking around with good size I imagine what six (laughs) four no not hey not not in second grade (laughs) I was probably like second third grade I was Probably like I was already wearing like probably like size ten, like size eight or nine. Oh, that's crazy. See, so the coaches, so I feel like your coaches probably already knew. You just didn't know. Yeah, yeah, I had the size. I mean, I was I was thick, man. I was probably like probably already touching like when. Okay. Like these. So when? Grade, four grade, yeah, yeah. So when? So when did you get like your first like college interest? Not necessarily offers, but like you know letters, things like that. So, yeah, great question. So, like, fast forward a little bit to, like, you know, eighth grade, ninth grade, I started, you know, we had recordings of our games. So I started put, making videos, and uh, I didn't think nothing of it. I started making videos, highlight videos of myself. Uh, and I guess maybe I was so futuristic with just thinking that, I, you know, and being independent, that I always never really depended on people or coaches. So I did everything yeah. myself. So, like, uh my ninth grade year, I was like, man, how the hell am I going to get to college? I'm like, how the hell am I going to get out of this situation, man? Because if, if you don't know Fort Smith, it, it's, 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 you know, it's like being a crab in the bucket. Everybody trying to pull you down. Yeah. Um, last night, you know, some people around my, uh, where my mama stayed, uh, two people got shot. I think one of them not going to make it. Like, it's just like, it's, That's very, crazy. it's not, the, it's not, the, it's not hood, but it's very hard to make it out. It's very hard to make it out. And so, you know, ninth grade, I was like, man, how am I going to get out 100%. of here? You know, because I'm looking, I'm like, man, see my mama grow up. She got a job. She working a nine to five in the factory. I'm like, man, she working a butt off. But we not go, we not making progress. Light bills late. You know, water bills shut off. Daddy had to go outside, turn the water on. Like, just a lot of things that people don't know that, like, I went through. So I'm like, man, how can I make a better situation for myself? And so ninth grade, I started taking football a little bit more serious and taking it there. And, uh, Started really watching film and doing what I needed to do. And uh, I already knew I was going to go to Northside. That's where uh, my older sister went to, and I was in that area, the school district, whatever. So Northside was the school I was going to go to. And so at the time, the D-line coach was, like, really, really into me and a couple other guys. He's like, yeah, man, come, you know, come to Northside. We're going to get you right, blah, blah, blah. And so I went to Northside, man, and and things started really, really going well. We they had a camp. We had a camp in the summer. And, like I was doing very, very well. Like because I was only uh, going to the tenth grade, I was doing yeah. I was doing very good. And so like that's when things started changing, bro. So after my tenth grade, mm. period, man, I, what I did it was pretty good, man. We lost almost every game. And after every game, I sit there and cry when I go home. And my mom's like, "Why are you so upset?" Because I'm like, "Man, I hate losing. I hate being a loser. I want to win." I, you know, in life, you got to be a winner. You can't be no loser. Yeah, yeah. Here, we got our ass swept every game, man. People thought <laughs> it was funny. Like, the, the older cats, they thought it was funny. And I did it, and I was right. like, man, 
That's all I want to do is win, get get a state championship. But yeah. so what happened was I had a decent season. I always, you know, my biggest thing was just hustle, run to the ball. When I was playing defensive end, he was running a 3-4 at the time, I think, or something like that, or 4-3. I was like, oh, okay. hustle, run to the ball, and you're going to be straight. Uh, that's going to that's gonna be your ticket. Run to the ball, wherever the ball at, just run. Just hustle, make, try to make every tackle, every play. Yeah. And so within that, man, at the end of the season, our head coach is going to get – he he's going to get let go eventually. And so what I did, I created a highlight video. This 10th grade. And I sent it out to every college I could think of. So I didn't wait for something to happen or something wow. to happen. I did it myself. So like a lot of people don't know that. I, I I got on a lot of teams' radar. So like I sent it to Arkansas. So what I did, <laughs> I was smart. Hop, That's hop, smart. Yeah, I hopped on the computer, bro, and I typed in. Uh, I went to the all the college the college websites I wanted to go to and found the recruiters and found seen an email. Got the email. Copied it and pasted it, put my highlight video and sent it out. I probably, I spent one night, I stayed up to like 3 a.m. to send out video. Boom, 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 boom. To like 50 different schools. That's crazy, bro. And so, um, got invited to an Arkansas camp, went up there, did pretty decent, was on their radar. I knew they were sending me letters and stuff like that. And then after my, after, you know, that spring, the end of that spring of my 10th grade year, uh, I'll never forget it, man. I'm in bed. I'm chilling. We had just finished the semester of, like, summer. We about to go into summer. So we had, yeah. like, two, three weeks off to chill, whatever. I get a phone call from my new head coach. He just came from Georgia. He was like, hey, Deshaun, uh, you know, I got some great news for you. I'm like, what's up, coach? It's, like, 8 a.m. in the morning. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to sleep. He was like, you know, the uh, Ole Miss, uh, University of Ole Miss, they offer you a scholarship. I'm like, what? University of Ole Miss offer me a scholarship? <laughs> This ten, this is like the end of my tenth grade. I'm like, what? That's crazy. That's so, that's big. That's so huge. Like, what? what? So like SEC I, two. Oh wow. First off, for Ole Miss. I'm like, man, let's go. So in my head, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, man, we going to Oxford. Let's go. Like, let's go. You know what I mean? So that summer, I went up there, and it was very, very disappointing because they basically told they basically told my head coach like, look, you know, we like him. We like the way he played, but he's too small. Like. For him to play in the SEC, he got to get yeah. he got to get stronger. Because at that time, I was like 215, 220. Right. He wanted me to be like, by the time I got there, by, by the time I seen it, it's like, man, you need to be 245, 250. Like, you need to be, you need to be thick. Yeah. And so I'm like, damn, I'm like 240. By the time I'm in the like, golly. But nevertheless, <laughs> but nevertheless uh, so that was my first offer. So I was ecstatic, man. I was happy. I was like, I was on cloud, and I was like, man, this is my ticket. You know, like you know, being from sports, and, man, it's not a lot of options. Yeah. So no, for sure. And so I was. Uh, they just started rolling in, huh? Like quick. So like once Ole Miss say, came in, did they just start? So I wouldn't say quick. So Ole Miss, when Ole Miss offered me, I started getting a lot of more letters. I got UCLA, LSU, yeah, Alabama, Auburn. And so that's – it, it, it kind of expedited that process. And so going into my junior year, Arkansas was really, really on me. I attended another camp up there. And Arkansas has always been one of my top schools that I wanted to go to just due to the fact that I'm an Arkansas boy. I watched yep. my kids growing up, watching Ryan Mallett, you know, now For I sure. my boys and my aunt lived in Fayetteville. So I was really always a Hall fan, thinking, you know, all the way through. So, like – you know, yep. won a loss. So, like, that was something. Cinderella that, story almost, too. Yeah, Cinderella story. But every Arkansas kid want to go play for the Hogs. Like, it's just, it's just it's what it is. Yep. And so, uh, they still didn't offer me, though. So, my junior year, man, uh, I balled out. I, I think I could really done better, man. Um, balled out. And then still, kind of, still kept on getting a little bit more interest. But Ole Miss was the only one really hanging out there like that. And then after at the end of my junior year, I went to junior day, and they uh well I went to a game after during my junior season, and they offered me, and that's when that's when shit changed, bro. Like they offered me and shit just changed instantly. Oh, that was perfect. So I started getting at least in the time being. Yeah, so the time being, so I'm like, okay, well, when they you know they offered me, uh, I didn't commit, I didn't commit ASAP. I waited, 
Uh, I didn't tell nobody. That's the one thing about me. A lot of people don't know, man. When I was growing up, man, I was very quiet, very quiet. I didn't talk to really nobody. Like, you know, I didn't really talk to nobody, but I was to myself. You know, I was in the books. I was studying. I was doing all the right things. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't smoking dope. I wasn't doing all these crazy things. I was walking yeah. out, you know, all the time. Quiet. You see me in the hallways. Whatever. I wouldn't, you know, I see her. I know everybody, but I just, yeah. walk, like, I just, you know, just sit back and observe and watch people. People watch, you know what I mean? Just watch people see how, humble. They, how they talk. And so I never really, I never really, uh, you know, engage in stupidity. You know, I see a lot of people do right. stupid things. And it's just, I was like, man, I got a ticket. Let me just, let me just, I got a year and a half. Let me just ride this out. I'm Gucci. So fast forward uh, to me committed to Arkansas. I didn't tell nobody. I didn't tell none of my teammates. Really didn't want to tell my coach because I knew what was going to come. <laughs> I knew it was going to come with a lot of added pressure. Yeah. A lot of just oh he think he this or he think he that because it was a lot of jealousy. Yeah. In my city, bro, it's a lot of jealousy. Like I said, oh yeah, dudes don't make it out. Like it's yeah. so many talented dudes. You're a small percentage, bro. Small percentage. There's so many talented dude, talented dudes that I thought could be with D two, JUCO, or you know what, he bro? Went, fall yeah. through the cracks, fall like the you crack. mentioned. Like you mentioned, like the I don't know, like this is a Fort Smith thing, and like you're from Fort Smith, you know what I'm saying? My family, my people from there, so I go down there yearly, see my grandma, things like that. But what I'm getting to is like the factory is like it's a mill, like people, like that's a like people graduate high school and then go right there. They don't think about taking the chance, they don't think, but it's also you know opportunity. Fort Smith, like you said, it's a very very it's a place that's almost like kind of in the shadow with a bright light. It's just we need the people to come together and think, you know what I mean, together. Exactly. And so, like, God, I think the biggest thing with guys from Fort Smith is that they don't really see what they can be. You know, all they see yep. is the, the dope boys. They don't see that you can have money and still, and still do it the right way. And so I think that's the one. Y'all have some ballers. Exactly. Y'all have some ballers. Like, I had so many guys. I had a couple of cousins on my team that was, like, cold. You know what I mean? That could have easily been – you know, Division One or FCS or JUCO maybe. And so, to me, it was just frustrating. But, like, I always, like I said, I was quiet, man. I just played my role, did what I had to do. So, fast forward to my senior year. So, I'm committed, and I start being more active in the community, yep. active with other people. And so, what happened was, man, it came with a lot of added pressure. And at that time, Arkansas, they be line coach that recruited me that I really liked it. He left. He went to Rutgers or something like that. And so they bring in a new guy. He started recruiting me. And that's when I messed up. That was the first time where I thought I messed up because when that happens, you got to be careful because you I was already committed. He just coming in. I'm not a guy that he really believed in or trusted in because he didn't recruit me. He just came in. It was just yeah. because what he came into, the situation he was in. So he it ain't like he had to say so if I got offered or not. Because what happens, man, when you get recruited, man, these coaches, they sit at a round table. And they say, man, should we offer this kid? And if everybody go around and say, yep, 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 they offer the kid. So, like, he didn't have an input on that. So, that was the first yeah. one. So there's a red flag with that one. So, mm. fast forward to my senior year, man, like, people start, you know, things start changing, man, like, girls coming around, things moving fast. And at this time, I already had a plan to the point where I was going to graduate high school early in December, and I was going to head up there and start working out and start getting into yep. the to start getting ready for it. So what happened was, so what happened was, my senior year started out really, really good. Like everything was going really good. And then we, we was about to play Greenwood. We was about to play Greenwood. We haven't beaten them ever since I've been there. And we haven't beaten them like eight, nine, 10 years, something like that. So we had practice, bro. We had practice. It's like a Tuesday or Wednesday, something like that. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday practice, something yeah. like that. And, we going through a tackling circuit, bro. And like one of my uh, one of the defense, like I ain't gonna lie, I was half assing, bro. I was half assing. It was hot, man. I'm tired. I'm like, man, you know what I mean? So I'm half assing yeah. the drill. And our coach is like, our, you know, he's from Georgia. He's like, Dick Sean. He was like, that's more shit. Blah, blah, blah. He got on the ass. And so uh, the drill kind of sped up a little bit, you know what I mean? And so one of my teammates, man, I because I had the ball and he was tackling me. Oh yeah. And dude, you know, dude stuck his helmet right on my shoulder, boy. It popped out. Oh. Oh my God. 
And so, like, I told I told my DC, I was like, hey, coach, man, something ain't right. Something ain't right at all. And so he was like, go to the trainers. Like, yeah, yeah, go to the trainers. So I go to trainers. At that time, the trainers know where to be found. So I'm like, now I'm in pain. Train that. I'm like, yeah. train that, bro. Uh, and it took her like 15, 20 minutes. So I'm talking to one of the student trainers. Like, I'm like, hey, look, my shoulder out of place. Like, I, I can feel it. Like, I, it's dislocated, whatever. And she's like, well, I don't know. And you know, they just student trainers. They young. They don't know. Yeah. So, like, this trainer came, and then she kind of like, she was like, yes, yeah, it's this, it's that, or whatever. It's probably a stinger. This, and I'm like, okay, cool. So I like, feel better, pop it back in, whatever. So I go back to practice. But, no, I think I missed the rest of that practice. I don't even remember. And so then that's a lot of, that's the onset of a lot of other issues. So <laughs> with that being said, bro, like, fast forward a little bit with that, we get to like maybe week five or six. I'm like, every game I'm wrapping it up, playing through the pain. Uh, uh, I think we play like Spring or something like that, some team, man. And I'm getting double team. You got to think, I'm committed to Arkansas. These cats. They oh, yeah. They coach oh, you hot every game. You might as well oh, have the little like, – you might as well have the star under you like on Madden. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like every game I'm getting targeted. Like they come to double team me. They not let me get one-on-one. We running the – at that time, we running the 3-4. So it's already oh, yeah. hard as hell. Like, I mean, somebody on two dudes is double team. So it's already hard as hell to, like, get to the quarterback and try to make plays. And run. Yeah. And uh, so I get double team, man, because I, I fail. I fail on my shoulder. Bow, fell on my shoulder, and this time my whole arm goes numb. It goes numb. Ooh. And I'm like, man, I sit there, man, I started like, I ain't gonna lie, I think I started crying a little bit. Uh, I started yelling. I'm like, ah, ah, my shoulder, ah, I'm rolling over the ground, like, ah, my shoulder, my shoulder. My coach come out of here, like, my coach come out of here, like, be quiet, be quiet, because he ain't want nobody to think that I'm hurt and mess up my chances of getting signed out. Well, and so uh, I'm like, ah, ah. So that night I go back to, back to the trainer. They're like, hey, look, you know, let's let's check him out. Let's go, let's let him go get the MRI. So I go get an MRI. You know, they like, yeah, the doctor like, yeah. He like, yeah, because he just did one of my cousin's surgeries that played basketball there. And so he, oh, okay. had, he was like, yeah, they showing. I'm pretty, I'm 100 percent sure you tore the label. I'm like, what the hell is a label? Ooh. I start googling. I'm like, what's a label? And then come to find out, they was like, yeah, uh, you tore your label. So I flew up. By that time, I was committed. And they already knew I was going to go uh, yeah. early. So after December, I was going to be done with high school. And I was going to go up there. So after yeah. work, I went up there to see their team doctor. I seen their team doctor. And went to today, they had a little trainer up there. Got checked out. They said the same thing. Like, yeah, it's a torn label. We're going to get you surgery in, like, January. I mean, late December. Uh, early January, so when you enroll, you already have surgery. You go through that process, but it's like he can play. And so they told me to miss one game, and I was against Southside. So my senior year, I didn't get to play against Southside because I was hurt, and everybody knew it. Yeah, and I regret that. You know what I mean? I'm like, dang, but I physically couldn't. I physically couldn't play because I was hurt. I'm yeah, like, I couldn't even move my elbow. Okay, I mean, I couldn't move my shoulder, right? And so yeah, that's no joke. It was no joke, and I knew I'd have surgery. And so I was like, well, let me sit out this last game and get ready for playoffs. Because playoffs are more important. We're trying to make a run to the state. State, you know, to the state. You know, take 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 the state, win state. So yep. uh, so with that being said, bro, like in, in for me, in, in order for me to graduate early as well, I had to take a college course in the summer. So my senior year in the summer, not only was I taking college classes, I was also working. My mom was like, hey, you gotta get a job. I was like, why well, I gotta get a job? I'm like, man, let me cool. She's like, no, you gotta get a job. So she made me, I get a job at CC. So I'm working at CC, working out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do the best I can with that, but I'm eating pizza. So I'm kind of getting a little, you know, a little fat a little bit, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I'm eating pizza every day. And so, like I said, fast back, fast forward back to, you know, me playoffs and whatnot. We end up losing second round or third round, second round or something like that in the playoffs. And then, you know, I eventually go on to get surgery. Uh, and whatnot. But my recruiting process was very weird. So my, uh, in a, like, in a, my junior year, me and my D.C., he had two sons that went to Oklahoma State that played ball. I heard about that. So we go we go to Oklahoma State because they was recruiting me a little bit. We go there. And, like, 
I'm just chilling on the sideline. I ain't thinking nothing. I see Emmanuel Ogbaugh. I see Jimmy Dean. I see all these guys. I see Tyreek Hill. You know what I'm saying? I see uh, Mason Rudolph. I see all these guys. Yeah. And Mike Gunny come up to me. I mean, he come up to me. They're like, hey, you the kid that committed Arkansas, so blah, blah, blah. So they offered me on the spot. They, they That's crazy. They like, hey, man, they want to offer you a scholarship right now. Like, they, they, you know what I mean? So I'm like, God, we <laughs> bet. So they offered me a scholarship. And Oklahoma, I love everything about Oklahoma State. The school campus. Me too. Team, like, it, it, I ain't it, getting it, no it, offer. I ain't getting no offer, but the black helmets, the orange jerseys, I was bought in. I was like, ooh. They, hey, they, they, they uniforms are sick, man. But, uh, yeah, so, and that was around the time when uniforms started going crazy. And that was really crazy. like a big part of people's commitments was just based off swag. Swag, yeah. And so that happened. Oklahoma State offered, uh, unless you had interest. Alabama, they a uh, receiver coach. They came down because they was recruiting one of the guys on my team from my eighth grade. Alabama was recruiting one of the guys on my team since the eighth grade. So me having that SEC attraction from Ole Miss and Arkansas. Oh yeah. Alabama naturally came in the conversation, and that receiver Magnet. coach came down. He was like, "Hey," he was like, "You know, we want to offer you." He was like, "But it's the same thing, Sean." He was like, "You got to play linebacker. You can't play. You don't see you as a DN." And I always think back to that. And I, and I told him, he's like, he's like, he's like, hey, man, you got to let me know now. He was like, because we'll offer you and help you try to make that transition, but you got to play linebacker. We don't see you as a DN. So if you ever met me and you see my statue, my size, yeah. you know, linebacker. that's the type of guys they recruit to be linebacker. So they, they thought I was too small to be a D linebacker. I had to be outside, though, right? He said outside, he said outside linebacker, blah, blah, blah. But, I don't know. So it, it, to me, it was like, dang, I think back to that all the time. Like, what if I just took a chance and went to Alabama? And I knew, but the reason why I said no, though, was because I knew that they was always constantly bringing five star recruits in. Oh, you yeah. Your ass yeah, yeah see, your ass smart. Draft, so you better be on your shit. So, <laughs> on it. You better be on it. So, like, I, so my, my thought process was like, well, if I take that route, I got to learn, I got to start learning how to play linebacker now. And my head coach was gonna, wasn't going to go for that because we had two decent linebackers at the time. So he wasn't going – I was not going to play a lot of linebackers. But thinking about it, it was probably the best – one of the best routes I could have took. But yeah. I went back to my senior year, man. I, I, so I graduated in December, which to me was just crazy. I, don't, I still don't know how I connected with that. Uh, through that process of, you know, graduating, graduating high school early, you know, that's unheard of. A lot of people don't do it. Uh, but no, I, it, I, is. it is. It is. So uh, – Things didn't end well for me. Like, I was hurt. We didn't win state. My senior year was very disappointing. But like my bright spot, I was about to leave and go off to Fayetteville. And so I get surgery. Uh, and I started making that transition to Fayetteville. So at this time, I got to also remind you, I'm only 17. So I graduated high school when I was 17. And I moved up to Fayetteville, 17. And I barely even know nobody. The only people that live in Fayetteville that I truly know is my aunt. That's the only people I know that live in Fayetteville, and I think my uncle was living there too in like Springdale or Robert. But other than that, I didn't know nobody. And my that was cousin, crazy. So I go up to Fayetteville, and mind you, this is like an hour away up the road. So I get on campus, man. Everything is the opposite of what I thought it was going to be. Like, it was so disappointing, bro. Like, I was depressed. Really? The first six months, I was depressed, bro, because I didn't know how college football worked. I didn't know that when you were hurt, your ass was in the room. I didn't know that you had to wake up at 4.30 or 5 a.m. and do mat drills, this and that. And even though you hurt, you still got to be there and participate in different things. I didn't know you got to have all these meetings at this certain time, this and that, these crazy hours. You got class. Then you got, you know, at this, like I said, at the same time, I'm hurting. I'm going through rehab. Yeah. My shoulder, you know, you know what I mean? My shoulder killing me every day. I got to, you know, walking up these hills, this and that. Yep. Yep. I'm just like, man, I'm like, this is not what I thought it was. Like, this, this, and like I said, I'm 17. I'm yeah, not, you went in the spring, so nothing bro, but yeah. workouts. It's the dead period. Like, everything just, you know, slow. And so I'll never forget it, bro. Like, we had got done with a workout, man, and I was on my way back to the dorm. The dorm was probably about like a 15 minute walk from the facility to the dorms. Man, and, I, and you know, I really broke down and cried, bro. I was like, man. This is not what I thought it was gonna be. This this is not what I wanted it to be. Like I was hurt. I was like, man, I'm I'm hurt. I don't know nobody. You know, I'm trying to talk to people, but everything moving fast. You know what I mean? 
Because a lot of people yeah. that go to the University of Arkansas, they not even really from Fortunate. They either from Fayetteville, Little Rock, Conway. So they kind of used yep. to a faster pace. That's a faster pace type of lifestyle. Yeah. Really fast, especially Little Rock. It's a little bit faster. So people, they got different priorities. You know what I mean? And so, yep. especially the black people, a lot of the black people go to the University of Arkansas, they from Little Rock, Conway. So they used to, and they probably, a lot of them got money. So they moving fast. They yeah. know people, blah, blah, blah. And so, so yeah, so like, I bought, I bu- you know, I'm walking back to the campus, up to my dorm, man, I bust down kind of, man, like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. I'm hurt. I ain't got, you know, I don't know nobody. You know, I'm in the training room. That's the part they left out. Oh, yeah, that's the part they left out in the recruiting <laughs> process. And so, you know, um, that spring, I didn't really play a lot. I was just on the sideline because I was hurt. They didn't want me to get, you know, I was young. I was a young player. I was coming back from an injury. Fresh out of high school, they're like, just let him, let him just work out and just, you know, learn the process, go in this and go in that. So I didn't, I didn't even do, I got like maybe like the last week of spring and that was it. <clears throat> and so fast forward that, fast forward, you know, going through the summer, summer workout, that was really good for me. I got big as hell that summer. And so you did. I got big as hell. And then I'm like, at this time, I had like six, seven DNs in front of me that had consistent playing time. Um, two or two of them in the league right now, and uh, I think a couple of them got another shot a shot at the league. But I had NFL guys in front of me. It was kind of obvious that yeah. defensive end or D tackle in that the 2015 class most likely you was gonna get redshirt because we had they had so much depth because Arkansas was going through a process where they were losing, losing, losing. So they finally the guys they started with when they first got there they were maturing from the juniors and seniors uh, and started maturing. And so they had a good, solid foundation of God. They just wanted to build up God behind them. Once they left, they wanted to you know, transition us to that. And yeah. so they had a good foundation of defensive ends. And it's very competitive. Like, these dudes strong, they tall, they long. You know, they know they know football very, very well. Uh, they play good ball either from Juco or from Texas or whatever. Yeah. And so, like I said, it was very, very competitive. So my that first year, they red shirt me, which I thought it was I wanted to, honestly, because the thing I left out is that my major was industrial engineering. And the class, uh, class scheduling, they don't really go with practice. They don't really go with meetings and this and that at times. Uh it really con- it's a big conflict. And so I always used to think that, you know, me being an engineering major, like that was that was a big, you know, big issue for them because let's be honest, a white coach. They don't really want their black players to be smart or educated or think anything outside of the NFL because then they're not working hard for them. They're not doing what they need to do to make yeah. them good so they get the next job, the next paycheck, whatever. So they don't yeah. really ever think about anything outside of them. Oh, yeah, there definitely wasn't no pass for practice. That was uh, – they. if anything, they was on your watch list now for sure. Oh, yeah. Just because you were in class. That's the, that's the crazy part. Instead of them yeah. encouraging it, Trying to, you know what I mean? Like, okay, you're going to be a little late here and there. You mentioned that. They'd be like, okay, that's all you did. But you're not going to play. Exactly. And so what happened was, you know, so what happened was, man, fast forward for, for my freshman year, I actually uh, I actually had the opportunity to to uh, start getting better a little bit. And things started looking a little bit more um, – but then, yeah. like I said, we had a lot of issues going on with the coaches. Like, my coach, me and my position coach, once I got there, I really did not like him. Because I'm very, I'm very picky when I like people. Like, I'm, I'm very judgmental. Like, when I meet somebody, I, in my head, I first I already got a thought process about how yeah. you, who you are as a person. I didn't like him. I did not like him at all. You know, I did not like him. I just, just knew it. I thought he was just, you know, weird. I didn't care if he coached in the league or not. But I just didn't really like him. I didn't really didn't really mesh well, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, so like I said, fast forward to that. Uh my soft we my soft my red shirt freshman year now. So like guys playing, you know, you know what I mean? And they still got me on scout team. I'm like, man, when my time gonna come? And I'm working hard. And like and one thing I didn't mention is like Dixon Street. All my teammates, they're going to Dixon, you know, they filling drug tests, they doing this, they partying, they doing all this other crazy stuff. Only been to Dixon probably less than five times. I didn't party in college when I was up there. I was yeah. locked in. I was like, man, this is my ticket. I don't come from nothing. My parents don't have a lot of money to their name. 
I'm trying to do the right thing so I get out get out of my yeah. house. Either, either football or not. So I didn't really have a lot yep. of time in my mind to party because I didn't see what I was celebrating. I didn't have nothing to celebrate. Yep. So I just, like I said, I just, that was one of the biggest things for me, which is like, keep working, keep working, keep working. So I, I'd be at the facility at like 10 o'clock on Friday. Friday morning, I'd be up there at 2, 3 o'clock just working, but working footwork drills, doing all these types of things, trying to get better, you know, and to the point where it just was just, it was just normal to do that. And so yeah. um, the extra work in, because I was like, man, it's going to pay off. The extra work will pay off. The extra yep. work will pay off. But it never did in my case. And so, like I said, fast forward to that, I actually, you know, some scout team at that time, still want to get no playing time, and then I never get this. I never this this was really when I really broke down, bro. We had a so we was probably like midway through the season. It was a, it was a bad season. We was about to play at FCS, yeah. team, and they had told the guys like, "Hey, look, you know, we only bring in a certain amount of guys to Little Rock who's playing Little Rock." They was like, "Hey, you can come, but it's no guarantee you're gonna get playing time. But if we get up on these boys, which we will, y'all most some of y'all most of y'all will get in." I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going. Like, at that time, it was the majority of the 2015 class that wasn't playing still. So we all go, like, yeah, let's all go. So we all went with a team up there, the Little Rock. And we we get up on the F- we get up on this FC team. We FC- FCS team, we beat the shit out of them. So, like, everybody knew, all the D linemen knew that, man, Deshaun, man, little Deshaun, man, he, he, worked, he worked hard, this and that. Like, you know, this is Thomas Shine. So, like, we yeah. got like, third, fourth quarter. And like we beat the shit out of him, like I said. My my D line coach come to me. He like he pointed at me like they he like be ready. He said he sees he going at it. Be ready. And so I'm like yes, finally I'm about to bust Uh-oh. that cherry. About to bust that cherry. Yeah. Bust that cherry. <laughs> Everybody hyping me up like get ready, they trying to get ready. Blah blah blah. You know don't mess up. Be ready. Like just hyping me up, being happy for me. Yeah. So I wait. I'm right there by my coach, just waiting, just waiting, happy, nervous. You know, got the bubble guts chilling, just happy, like just like, yeah, you about to be it. So our DC man, they on a they I guess you know they, they got the headsets on. I don't know what he was talking about. But just fast forward, bro, I didn't get in. I'm just like, bro, what? Yeah. On these boys. And so on the way back home from Little Rock, I text my mom. I told her, I said, man, I don't know what more I could do. And on the ride there, man, I cried again. I'm like, I'm bust down in tears. I'm like, man. Like, what can I do, man? Like, y'all said I was going to get in. And then I talked to our GA, which he was cool as hell. I was like, man, uh, I ain't going to say his name. I was like, hey, I was like, man, what man, what happened? But I was like, man, I don't know, man. They said they was going to put you in, and then it just it unfolded that way. Uh, so I didn't get in. I'm like, man, FCS team, we up on these boys, mm-hmm. running the news. Y'all said I was going to get in. Pointed at me and said, be ready, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what happened? Like, that's when I knew it was deeper than just football. Yeah, yeah. And that, uh, you know, things weren't just always going to go my way. So was it at that point uh, you felt like, I'm going to leave, I got to go different path, transfer? When did, nah, that, when did that start playing the role? Nah, that, that, that wasn't, a, that wasn't a, a, on my mind at the time. So what happened, fam, was like, I pretty much, I was like, man, I was really, I was depressed at that time. I, was, I couldn't even sleep at night, bro. I would I would be in my apartment like constantly thinking like man what can I yeah. I'm do? doing wrong what is this like is this supposed to be like this supposed to be how I feel every day and, you know my teammates out there having fun partying Dixon this and that and I'm like man I'm just trying to get on the field but I'm just trying to like I'm just trying to make my way but I, that wasn't a breaking point that wasn't a breaking point so that year our DC and our D line coach got fired which I seen it coming we already knew our DC yep. he got fired and one thing about college football is once you once you get you know at this time it's like my second D line coach. Once you, once you get in the cycle, with these coaches coming in and out. Yep. You can get caught up in the sauce because like when a new coach come in, he don't know nobody. He yep. don't know nothing. He might like you. He might even think you could be beneficial to him. But that's not that's not how it usually works. What how it usually works. Positive thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Positive that's thinking. Hoping. Exactly. <laughs> What usually happens is he probably has a meeting with the head coach, and they probably like go down the roster like, "Hey, look, these are your guys. These who these are the guys who has NFL talent. This is who the guys that have that have a big question mark on their name." And I know that conversation happened. They're not about to pay you a quarter million dollars, and they don't debrief about their position group. I know they did. So, oh yeah, dude came in, 
he just came he just came from the Jets. And he was transitioning to a three four. So it was like, hey man, like, you know, you need to beef up, get to like two eighty five, two ninety. We running the three four. We need our DNs to uh our DNs to like be thick because you gotta take on double team. That wasn't my fourth yeah. day. That was I was a four three DN. I wasn't a three four DN. Like, you know, I played in high school, but that's high school, you know what I mean? That's yeah, high school, nah, college. Yeah. The bar and the taco coming down on you, man. Like, come on. That's six hundred so, pounds of beef. Minimum. More like seven hundred. Bro, they not playing, bro. They gonna bring that they gonna bring that, <laughs> they gonna bring it every time, bro. And so, uh, yep. so man, so you know, I was like, man, this is not good for me. It's not. This is not how I play. Some dudes, this is, they thrived in that because it was so simple and they were strong. And that's another thing, bro. Like, I wasn't even the strongest cat. I squatted like five hundred, and you might be like, damn, that's a lot. But we yeah. had cats hitting seven hundred, eight hundred. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just taken back from it. I'm like, man, these dudes squatted the house. Yeah, we we did a lot of <laughs> for real. We did a lot of single squats, so you had guys, you had guys putting up like four, five hundred single leg squat, like just crazy stuff, bro. And um, like I insane. said, fast forward to that, bro. The new D line, insane. Yeah, insane, bro. The new D line coach come in. He actually come, and you know, I, you know, my class. I have a big time class schedule, so I had classes at times of our meetings and practice and I would meet with him every morning around 8, 8 a.m. when he come in and uh, we would talk, we would, go over the, we would go over the stuff we needed for the day and I would study the plays during class and then he had to practice and then one day I was like, coach man, I can't come to practice I, I'm going to come practice late on Thursday because I got uh, class and he was like, oh Deshaun, he was like, oh you must love school more than you love football that's what he said. You must love school. That's crazy. And I was like, and he, you know, mind you, my, at this time, my position coach black. He the first black position coach I had in college. Yeah. And so I'm like, so you telling me, you just want me to be, a, once, once I'm done here, you just want me to have a whatever degree and I, I can't get no job. I can't do this. I can't do that. It's, it's all sweet if I don't make it to the league. So that's it. Education? No one route, me, bro. Like one route, one route. If that don't work, then I, then like my life over with. So how are you I'm supposed good. to think any different as an athlete if he's the power figure exactly. right now in your life? Exactly, bro. It's insane. So, exactly, bro. So like we kind of bumped heads because like after that I'm like it left it left a sour taste in my mouth. And so then go fast forward to the screen. I'm not getting a lot of reps, but I get reps here and there. And when I do, I do very, very well. Like everything is very, very good. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm like, man, I'm doing really good. They, I know they trying to grade me low, but in my head, I'm like, I'm doing the same thing. This dude that, that he doing, he getting this amount of reps, or he grading out this. Yeah. Amount. I know what they trying to do. They're trying to single me out, and so they'll do that at times. They don't like you. They don't want you. They'll just try to make you feel like you don't belong there. They'll try to just make you feel like you just not that guy and you don't need you don't yep. need him or whatever and so that's what started kind of happening bro uh and at the end of the spring i told my girlfriend after the spring game i told my girlfriend i was like look i was like i'm probably about to leave you know after the spring game i went home i cried i was like man that's it they don't want me it's obvious they don't want me here i have nothing more to give i did everything i could i did everything i could i worked i watched what i ate you know i worked hard i did put an extra time in you know, and I think you know one of the biggest reasons why I left. I really thought I couldn't play there. You know, I really did. You know, I you know the three things that I think about the most when I look back at it is like I think the talent. I think the talent was lacking a little bit, and I think you know the strength, and I think the you know a little bit of play with a little bit of politics. I think I rubbed a couple of people the wrong way, and so uh, with that being said, bro, like the talent thing. I mean, they was bring at this time they was recruiting a little bit better. They were bringing real, yeah. real good dudes in. And at the same time, I still wasn't getting that much stronger. Like, the SEC is no joke, bro. Like, you have to be strong. Like, if you're not strong, oh. if you play the D-line. Wide receivers and corners, they can, they can they, you know, they can, uh, you, can you, you can be weak. You know what I'm saying? Safeties, they can be yeah. weak. You know what I'm saying? But if you in the trenches. Now in the trenches, oh. You in the test, you got to be strong. So, 
you I have to be up, times two in SEC. There's two, regular bro. strong and there's SEC strong. SEC there's strong. a whole different, it's a whole different level. Game. And so at that point, I was like, man, it's time for me to go. So I dipped out. And, uh, and, and this is where things get weird. So I dipped out. I had like, you know, three years left. I'm like, man, somebody, somebody got to pick me up. Like, you know, I'm from the SEC. I'm a young player. I got three years left. Yeah. So something got to give. Now, at this time, we didn't have a transfer portal. That, that didn't exist. So you still had to go through the school, and they was hands-on with it. We'll see, see I wanted to know about that. See, I heard about that, and, and like, the, I heard transfer portal. So, you know, blah, they, blah, they would enter the transfer port, portal, and they get picked up like that. And I'm like, where where'd this come from? Exactly. So that's, that's insane. So you did that before that was even a thing. Yeah, so the transport portal wasn't there yet. So like you had to what 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 happened was like you just you know you, you talk to your uh, not the academic people you talk to uh, they got certain staff members where they deal with that you know. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. They do all the NCAA, the eligibility, the eligibility team, eligibility and all that. Stuff, yeah, like the, the cast yeah. deal with that. So we gonna talk to them. And like he called me back. I'm like he's like man, I looked at the list that you made because I made a list of like 30 schools. He's like man, you got some FBS schools on here. Um. Do you are you you know you got three years of data you know if you go FCS you would just you know you'll be able to use uh, all three of your years you don't lose a year data and you know you get more playing time more chances of different things blah 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 but I don't think it was that I think our head coach seen the list he was like yeah I'm not vouching for this kid I'm not putting my name on the line for him I'm not doing that blah 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 so he didn't sign off yeah. he didn't like the schools I put on there so they probably changed the list because I had Oklahoma State I had a bunch of other schools. Oh yeah, they didn't want to. They didn't want to. They didn't want to see. They didn't want to see me go do better. And like that's so crazy to me. Like how some coaches and I, like I said, I don't know if that's true, but it you know is is you know very me. I'm speculating very very much because I think that's what happened. But like I mentioned, bro, it's just a lot of things happened in that period of time where I just you know questioned a lot of people, a lot of their integrity, and I seen the ugly side of college football. You know the way they cheat you. The way they, you know, when things don't go right when they recruit you and, and, and they start. Oh, yeah. People. And so it, it, it was a hot Yeah, yeah. Just it's, it's, it's a constant cycle. They don't care about you. Yep. They don't. That's Sometimes it, bro. They do. But for the most part, they don't use just a number. And so. Yeah. Uh, so I told at the time I do, I told the DC that was there at the time, I was like, hey, look, coach. And I was like, hey, coach, look at this. I want to go to this school called Lamar. They in Houston. At that time, my girlfriend. Her people stayed in Houston. Lamar was, they had a great industrial engineering program. That was my major. All my credits were transferred over. Like, beautiful Cinderella story if I got to go there. Just had a corner that transferred from Georgia there. She uh, got drafted in the third round. So I'm like, man, it's a perfect scenario. Go there. They just got yeah. it. He got drafted. Blah, blah, blah. So, fast forward with that, man. Like, I ended up never even hearing from Lamar. So time I'm like, man, I'm taking all my visits. So I go to Eastern Kentucky. I go out to California. I go to Texas. Yeah. I, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I seen you traveling, going to the – I was like, okay, okay. I see you. I so see I start, you. You, you know, really out there. Yeah, so I started just doing all, all what I can in the recruiting process uh, with that. And I ended up taking the route to go to Texas. But my time in Arkansas, man, it was spent very, very well. Like, outside of just, you know – being with my girlfriend and whatnot, I just I always had the uh, mindset that whatever happened, I was going to be straight. Right. And so uh, I always felt like that. So uh, I always felt like that, that I had the best the best opportunity to do what I – Hold on one second, bro. Hold on one second. Oh, snap. Oh, are you good? I always had the best opportunity to do what I needed to do, bro. Uh, to do what I wanted to do. And so that was that was one of the things that I always just, you know, wanted to do and thought I, I had the ability to do was just to bounce up and lead to another place. And so you know, looking back at it, man, I, I don't have no regrets. I think I sucked everything out of the university I saw that I could. And they got what they wanted out yeah. of me. And so you can't really be mad in a situation like that. And um, things can always be better. You always go back and 
I could have this. I wish I could have done that. For sure. I, but at the end of the day, you know, life's life. You can't, you can't sit here and just dwell on the past. You know what I mean? So you have to just. And you took a risk. I took a that risk. That was like your first time, you know what I'm saying, uh, using that wrist muscle. You know what I'm saying? Exercising that and see what that really took. And some people would have just took that. Graduated, got the degree from Arkansas, and it would have been what it have been, you know what I mean, just to say that they played there. You still took a bet on yourself. Like, you left the situation that not many people, because they would have just been happy enough being a Razorback. That's enough. Content. Exactly. I took a risk, bro. I took a heavy – I took a big risk, man. And some people, they don't really – they scared to take risks in life. They scared to – um Take a chance, and I was like, "Man, take a chance, Daytron. Shoot your shot. You know, if you you could easily have just stayed there and everything being comfortable and things being smooth, but take a risk. Let's see where yeah. it can get you. Let's see. Let's see what where it can take you. Like, don't yeah. be scared. Like, you know, what I'm saying the worst thing that can happen is you to fail, and that's what happened. So when I went to that school in Texas, man, I ended up tearing my ACL, dislocating my elbow. Things got even worse. You know what I mean? Oof. So, like, it, I went down through it. So, it was just like, you know, you lead the SEC and then you go down to the FCS program and you get hurt like that. I mean, it can do something to you mentally, but that's when I really, uh, you know, just changed the way I started thinking and the way I started carrying myself and I started really yeah. this is man. You know, the yeah. one thing I always did, though, fam, was that I would always think about the future and think about the people I needed to meet to put myself in a position to be successful outside of football. You know, so, big time. You know, big time. that's that's the one thing that I always did, bro. And like I said, I don't, I don't regret a lot of things that happened at the University of Arkansas. It was a dream school. I could check that off right. my list of things that I wanted to accomplish in my life, and I made it happen. Uh, Nothing from a city where people, you know, despise you. They look down on you. They don't support you. They don't care about you. They talk about right. you. You know, they don't. They don't really have a lot of love and, and affection for people doing positive things. No, certain individuals do, but for, yeah. for my yeah. people. For the most part, but nah, the, yeah, you know. You really a lot of support. You know what it is for. Um, yeah. And that's suspected. And I, and I don't blame them. I blame other things, you know, what I, you know what I mean? But the city where I'm from, bro, at one point in time, it was one of the number, it was the number one depressing city in the country. And for me to make it out of that, and for me to be, go from Texas to now Florida, I look at it as a <laughs> big time change. Big time, you know what I mean? Like, I could be stuck. I could be stuck there right now, going through some things, but now I'm down in Florida chilling. You know, I miss my growing, family, my people growing. Yeah, growing, man. Trying to figure yeah. out the new way, man. That's I'm like you have to do way. those things. You got to be uncomfortable to grow. You have to be uncomfortable. Like every time you level up, you're gonna be a certain level of comfort, and that's where people get stuck. Once you start getting comfortable, bro, you get stuck. I'm telling you. Exactly. Like, that's probably the best thing. You, like, it's already done changed your life complete, you know what I'm saying, 360. Exactly. Just being uncomfortable and knowing that things going to work itself out. Just knowing that, man, it, it's scary, but it is good, though. It's a good scary because you got to challenge yourself. You know, if you just, yeah. you just static and you remain, remain in the same spot, it's not good, man. You're not growing. You're not pushing yourself. You're not pushing the needle. And so, like, I've always tried to push the needle, you know, yeah. I was trying to push the needle, put myself in positions where I honestly had no business doing what I was doing, you know. And so for sure, um, you went to Arkansas on the mission. To be honest, like the fact that you wasn't trying to party, the fact that they weren't treating you the way you wanted, you could easily go, "All right, well then, I'm gonna turn these extracurricular activities up." You know what I mean? It's whatever, but you stayed focused. Even you were still on a mission, even when they didn't see your vision, and that's that's life. Yeah, I mean, I even remember, you know. It was a time where me and my girlfriend were dating, man, and uh, I told her, and she was a nurse, I told her, I was like, hey, look, it's this guy that came talk to us in class today. You know, I emailed him. I set up a time where we're going to go up, we're going to get lunch with him. Kind of find out the dude was an alumni, and he was an engineer. He had just came up with this device. He was, he was in the process of getting a patent for it. And he was like, yeah, Daytron. And I love the story. His mom died when he was in college. You know, he had a D in a Cal 3 or something like that, like terrible engineer. Right. But he always worked hard and just, kept, you know, great got better. And then, you know, he told me, he's like, yeah, after we, because we ate lunch and everything, was, he was talking about his, you know, he, how he grew up in the process, him, you know, developing the advice he was developing. He was like, hey, look, he was like, you know, I'm about to go to the bank right now and uh, drop off $30,000 for this business. 
because him and a couple of guys were going in on it. Well, fast forward today, that was like four or five years ago. Uh, that dude worked over a million dollars because his company took off. Uh, his net worth was like 10, 20 million. And uh, his patent took off. Uh, he, he in a big market. He really trying to get it off. Uh, they, they're trying to get it cleared through you know, the medical laws and all that. But it's just like little things like that. Like I never just thought about football. I was like, man, let me sit down with some yeah. entrepreneurs. People really getting some money, not just <laughs> playing football and this and that. Like people that's really in the real world making real yep. business. And that's just what I was doing. And uh, like I said, I like I said, I don't have no regrets of what happened. I had fun. I worked hard. I did what I needed to do. Uh, nobody could ever say that I didn't give 110. percent uh, At times, I did get frustrated, and like I said, I think a lot of things, a lot of variables, went into me not being successful there. You know, sometimes not being successful is being successful because you have yeah. to learn how to fail to win. You know what I mean? Like, look at any any successful person you meet. You know, everybody see Elon Musk with Tesla, but they never see all the other ten companies that failed before that. Oh before yeah. Tesla. So it's like failure, you can't avoid failure. You got to enjoy it. You got to embrace it. You need it. It's you part of the formula. It. It's part of it. That's part of it. And so that's what happened, man. And then, like, you know, I could easily spend another 30, 45 minutes talking about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll probably say that for another day or something like that. But like I said, man, I have no regrets. I did what I was supposed to do, man. I made it out. You know, the, the odds were stacked up against me, man. Like, real. That was the mission, man. My mom didn't go to you college. completed the mission. Yeah, my mom didn't yep. go to college. My daddy, he didn't go to college. He didn't graduate high school. Like, the odds were stacked against me. I'm black. I'm in Arkansas. I'm in a city where it's like the number one city in the country. Uh, So I made it out. The odds were very, very, very. They're, they're against me, man. And, and I beat them. And I always think about it. Yep. Things get tough in my life. I'm like, hey, look, you've been here before. You've been in the trenches. Sure. You know what yeah. I mean? And so I think with anybody man. that heard my story, man, the one thing I wish you could take out of it is just keep going no matter what. People going, you know, and that's the thing that kind of bothered me. When I went back to my city after like two, three years after I left, people were like, oh, yeah, man, I heard you failed a drug test. I heard you was doing this. I heard this. I heard that. Blah, blah, blah. You know, just negative. Just Crying on downfall. You were smoking yep. dope. This and that. None of that was true. They didn't even yep. know the truth, but it's just it's crazy how your city would just put you down like, oh well, he was he failed a drug test or this or that and this this that blah blah blah. It was like it was none of that. It's crazy. It was none of that. It's crazy. But they know I was up there trying to take care of business. You know what I mean? Trying to meet, yep. trying to get things going yeah. in my life because I knew once football was over with, whether it was the NFL or not, I needed to have myself in a situation where I could win and be successful. And so playing around and going to Dixon, yeah, that's cool for now. But, yeah. So what's your future gonna hold, man? Appreciate the insight for real. Exactly. What it gonna look like? For real, man. You gonna have bread. You know, you can move in the right direction. And so yep. that's my unclouded recruit story, bro. Like it, it was crazy. Yeah. It was a hell of a ride. I don't regret nothing. I did what I was supposed to do. I rubbed a couple people wrong, but who don't? You know, for sure, that's life, man. The business. And we it's thankful for your insight, bro. Yeah, we it's thankful. Business. Like a lot of players who get to go right from high school to the SEC, um, you, we all think it's just glory, no guts. You know what I mean? Like, so we definitely you. appreciate the insight. A lot of kids could probably. There's a lot of kids in your position going through this, and there's a lot of kids, you know what I mean, who probably didn't even get the chance to take that risk because they don't know what what to happen. So for you to come out and speak today, bro, much appreciated for real. Man, I appreciate it too, man. Uh, we gonna keep this thing going, and we gonna get some more stories on here, and we gonna take it up another notch, man. And, and I yes, promise, sir. For real, appreciate it, man. Thanks, man. We out. Man. Hey, no problem. Hey, we out. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Yeah, that thing was live. We out. I think. Good. Mm, oh, you did your thing, Brody. Yeah, bro. Appreciate it, bro. You killed that. No, nah, for sure. No, nah, for sure. You know what I'm saying?